Let me lose you. Are you ready? Jesus, you reign. Come here in this place. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, 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 Jesus, you reign, come here, in this place, oh, hey, yeah. You reign in me. Yay. You know, I'm from America, and I don't have any interpretation. How many of you understand English? All right. You know, I just want to share my story. I was a drug addict for 22 years and I was an atheist my whole life and I saw Christians I saw the church and I saw a bunch of people that I thought were hypocrites I saw people that hid inside of buildings 
This is not about hiding inside of a building. Jesus is not religion. He is not religion. Jesus is a relationship with God as a father. I didn't understand that. I grew up in a children's home. I grew up using drugs from 12 years old. My mom and dad got divorced when I was 11 and they put me in a home. I didn't understand what it was like to have a father that was home with me. A lot of people grow up that way. Where they don't have a father. Where they don't have a mother that cares about them. I grew up that way. They didn't know how to care about me. I was living in a boys home for five and a half years. And I got out and I joined the Marine Corps in America because they were looking for a few good men. And I went in and I went to my, built, my, my basic training. And after training, I ran away from the military. I ran away and I hid in the mountains in America, out in Colorado. And I got arrested and I got thrown in jail. And they put me in jail. And then they brought me back across America in shackles and chains. And I was put in prison, military prison. And I was in there for about five and a half months, six months. And I got out. And I ran away again. I ran away from the military again. And I went and hid in the same place that I hid before. And I got busted a year later. And I got put in jail. And then they brought me back across America again. And they put me in military prison again. This wasn't a fun life. It was horrible. I got kicked out of the military after I got out of jail. And I got a bad conduct discharge, which labels you. Always. You can't really get jobs that way. Then I met a girl in a bar. And we moved in together. And I tricked her into thinking I was a really cool guy. I was a manipulator and a maneuverer. I was a liar. I stole from everybody. I was labeled the worst because I was the worst. I hurt and destroyed people's lives. So she got pregnant and we had our daughter. And when my daughter was born, I realized I had no idea how to be a father. So immediately I became suicidal and I wanted to end my life. My girlfriend was going to leave me and if she took my daughter away, that's all I had. If you leave me, I'll kill myself. And then she said a few months later, I'm leaving you. I'm going to find another man that's going to take care of me. And I said, if you do, I'll kill them. I'll kill you and I'll kill myself. And I went through life suicidal, thinking that I was going to kill people. And I really would have done it because that's what it does. I was depressed. I was full of anxiety. I was full of anger. It was everybody else's fault. Everybody's fault. I had no idea that there was this Jesus. Lots of Christians, they hide in churches and they talk about their Jesus inside the church. But they're afraid to talk about Him in public. In the public place that Jesus talked about, God everywhere He went. It was amazing. Miracles happened everywhere He went. But nobody approached me with the Gospel. Nobody told me about Jesus. I'm here to tell you today, no matter where you are, that religion cannot save you. Religion condemns you. The church needs to turn to a relationship with God as a father. He is a good, good father. God does not come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus came to give us life. And that we may have life abundantly. Abundant life. Amazing life. A different life. A life that we never knew we could have. So she stayed with me, my girlfriend, for seven and a half years of my daughter's life. In a death threat situation. And one day I came home and she was gone. So I went immediately over her, to her father's house to get a rifle. Because I was going to end my life. Lots of people think about suicide. Lots of people. Lots of people. People think that because you have money, you have everything. Money is not everything. Money causes more problems, more responsibility. More. 
people, you're not safe just because you have finances, I promise you. I promise you. There is no peace in finances. There is no peace in religion. There is no peace because you think you have it all okay. The only peace is in Jesus Christ. Jesus came to give us peace that surpassed understanding. I'm not preaching at anybody. I hated that my whole life. I hated it. I'm not here to condemn you or to tell you that you're bad. I'm not telling you that at all. I'm telling you that there is a Father that loves you. There is Jesus Christ who died for you so that you could have life. He paid a price not so that you could just get to heaven. He paid a price so that heaven could get inside of you. So that God, the Father, could come and make His home inside of you. That's what He did. But I had no idea. So that day I went to the gun cabinet because I was going to end my life. And on the way to the gun cabinet, I passed by a phone book and opened it. And the phone book opened to churches. And I thought, that is the last thing that I need in my life. After all, why would I go to a building where people are talking about somebody that doesn't exist? That's what I thought. But I went, nevertheless, to this one church. And when I went in there, I'm talking to this guy, and I told him, I need to tell somebody right now. I need to talk to somebody right now. And he said, come on in. And he loved me. And I didn't understand what that was. I had no idea. And he talked about this Jesus, and I said, I didn't come here to hear about Jesus, man. After all, why would I think Jesus is in a building when nobody in those buildings ever approached me and shared that God loved me? I never knew that. I had no idea that there was a God that loved me. Never had any idea. And he told me and he said, hey, since you don't want your life, why don't you give it to somebody that does? I thought, who would want my life? All I've done is hurt people. He said, Jesus. I said, come on, man. How could a dead guy 2,000 years ago have my life? That's just silly. He said, that's just it. He's not dead. Jesus is alive. I said, what? He's alive? How can he be alive? And he shared the gospel. He shared how God so loved the world that he sent his son to pay for my sin. I said, my sin? I said, what is that? Everything that I did, all of my life, I hurt people. I destroyed people. See, people think that because they didn't hurt a lot of people, that they're safe. You're not safe, I promise you. There's only one. There's only one way to have peace with this God. There's only one way to have peace with the Father. His name is Jesus. And so that day, he said, God wants your life. I said, whatever, he can have it. He said, Amen. I said, what is that? He said, here's my number, call me. I said, I'm not going to need your number, dude. I'm good. I thought, I'm good. I can do this. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I went and called my daughter and I said, you need to tell mommy that daddy found God. She said, what's he like, dad? I said, I have no idea. But I saw somebody today that does. That man had a light in his eyes. That man had Jesus inside. I saw that this man knew something was real. He had him. And I said, no way. You're kidding me. This is crazy. I said, I'm going to take you to meet this man. I had no idea that I had given myself to this Jesus. And so that night I put my daughter to bed and I was out on a cocaine binge the first night and I hated it. See, religion is that you have a theory about God you have an idea about God, but you never gave yourself to God. You didn't surrender yourself to God. And that was where my life was. I didn't give up. I held on to me. And here I am, trapped in that very thing that I hated my whole life. Hypocrisy. Religion makes you a hypocrite, whether you like it or not. There is no way that you can live a life that's pure and have peace with God. Unless you surrender everything that you are to this king. 
And five and a half months went by. And all I did was hurt people and steal from people the same way I did before. But this time, I had this God name. This Jesus. To me, it was a theory. I had no idea how to have it. But I knew how this guy, he had it. He had it. So finally, five and a half months later, I go out in a drug deal. And I picked up somebody. Picked up a kid from New York City. I picked up a gangbanger. He had cocaine. I needed it. I didn't have any money. So I ripped him off. I told him that I was the police. I said, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say, cannon will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. I, I knew my rights because I'd been read them a lot. And the kid said, I knew you were a cop. And he got out of the car. And I hit the gas. And he unloaded a 9 millimeter at me. Boom, 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 boom. And I heard a voice say, I took those bullets for you. Are you ready to live for me yet? It was real, and I really got shot at. And he was only three meters away from me. And that voice echoed through my vehicle. Echoed in my soul. And I went out that night and did all the drugs. But I couldn't get high. All night long, every time I tried to get high, that voice killed my buzz. All night long. I took those bullets for you. Are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? You know? I went home that night and there was not one bullet hole in my car. Not one. So, why would I be bold? Because I should be dead. I should be killed. I should have been shot. The devil tried to kill me. Do you understand? Ten feet away, I should be dead. And that night I went home and my girlfriend said, get out of my life. And I left. My daughter's screaming. And I went away to another rehab. And in this rehab, I have these three nights where I have encounters with the person of Jesus Christ. Three dreams in a row. And the third night he said, go home. Crazy. I quit everything. All my life I never followed through. But that night... I woke up in the morning, and I packed my stuff. And that pastor came to pick me up. And I went to my house. And on the way to my house, I'm thinking, God really loves me. This is crazy. He loves me despite all the things that I've done, and all the stuff that I've said, and all the people that I've hurt, and all the lives that I've ruined. He loves me. He loves me. Religion doesn't tell you that. No, religion says, follow these rules, and then you might be okay with God. And then God might love you. He might love you. Who knows? Who can know? No, religion isn't where it's at. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, He hung guilty on the cross. And all of the sin, and all of the stuff that you wish that you never did, all of the times when you missed it, and you messed up, Jesus Christ, He paid a price for you to be free. For you to be free from guilt, free from shame, free from condemnation, free from regret. It's where He doesn't just forgive your sin, but He removes your sin as if you've never done it. As if that was never the person that you were. And that's what my Jesus did for me. And so on my way home, I'm just thanking God. And I get to my house. I ruined my girlfriend's life. I destroyed her. I threatened to kill her for nine years. My daughter, all she knew was an animal for a father. And when I got to my house, my daughter came running across the porch. And she grabbed me. And I realized that I was a father. I realized that I was a dad for the first time in my life. For the first time in my life, I realized I was a father. And that God had made me a father. Dads, you cannot be a father without God as a father. You cannot father your children without God as a father. Women, daughters, I'm so sorry that you grew up that way. But I put my daughter through that for seven and a half years. And then when Jesus came into my life, he made me a father. And my daughter came running across the porch. And I said, honey, I'm so sorry for all that I've done to you. 
She said, Daddy, for what? I'm just glad you're home. I said, Honey, that's just it. Daddy can't live here. Daddy loves you. But Daddy can't live here at this house. I ruined Mommy's life. I destroyed Mommy's life. She said, Daddy, this is your home. I said, I know that you know that. This is where I lived. But I have to say I'm sorry to Mommy. And I'm holding my daughter for the first time as a father. And I realized I was a dad. It's so exciting. And my girlfriend came out of the house and I said, hey. I said, I am so sorry for what I've done to you. But I'm going to show you what it's like for this girl to have a father. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to work. I'm going to provide for her. And I'm going to show you what it's like for a father to be in this daughter's life. Because see, my girlfriend didn't grow up with a father because her father left when she was five. So it happens all the time, all the time. And my girlfriend looked at me and I said, I'm so sorry for what I've done. She said, I know you are. When you went away, I gave my life to Jesus. I said, what? She said, I've forgiven you. Only God, through Jesus Christ, can cause you to have forgiveness in your heart for people that have hurt you and for people that you have hurt. Only Jesus can wash away every tear. Only Jesus can bring you real forgiveness, real peace, real grace. I'm not preaching at anybody. I'm telling you that there is freedom. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. There is freedom. And that day we decided that we were going to get married. The girl that I destroyed. So we got married four days later in between first and second service. And she became my wife. Our oldest daughter, who was seven and a half, is now 19 years old. We have a, another daughter that's 10 years old. We have another daughter. They're all daddy's girls. We have another daughter that's five years old. And then we just adopted a son last Sunday that was born to a mother that was drug addicted. And he was born addicted to drugs. But God is going to set him free and give him a life that he's never even thought that he could have. Because that's what God does. He is not religious. God is relationship. And it's a relationship with the one named Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to give you relationship. He wants you to know that He's real. He wants you to know that God is your Father. God is an amazing Father. There is none like Him. None like Him. I'm telling you that salvation is found and no one else but Jesus Christ. He died for your sin. And he was resurrected. There's no other religion. There's nothing else on the planet. That a God would die. That he would come to die for his people. So that he can live inside of his people. That's totally different. Totally different. You can be forgiven of your sin. But not just for now. You can be forgiven of your sin forever. And you can have eternal life. But it starts with knowing God. It starts with giving your life to Jesus. Giving your life to Jesus. If you're here and you don't know God and you've grown up in religion, I am sorry that religion is what it is. But you do not have to have it any longer. You can have a life, and you can have an abundant life. If you're here and you'd like to have a life, and you'd like to have Jesus Christ be your everything, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Amen. 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 No matter who you are, no matter where you're at, it's this easy. It's just saying... I want everybody to pray with me right now. Just say this, Jesus, we believe that
that you died for our sin and that you raised from the dead for us to have eternal life we say we have sinned and fallen short do you, do you understand me? do you speak English? no somebody help him you speak Norwegian what do you speak? No. Oh. Yeah. What does he speak? Russian. What? You're from Afghanistan. You're Muslim. Oh, you need Jesus, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Right now. Just tell him. Yeah. You do. Oh, he's, uh, he's from Afghanistan. You're, you're Muslim. But you don't practice. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, Kim, let me pray for you. Yeah. I see. Jesus. Interpret. Yeah. Jesus. I'm asking you to reveal who you are to this Muslim. Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary, Maria. You never had an earthly father. He had no earthly father. He came from the soul of God. Jesus. Reveal to him. It's, it's no father. No. God wants to be your father. Allah is not a father. No. He is not a father. He is not love. Allah is not love. God is love. God is love. In God. Yeah. God placed Jesus in Maria's belly. The Quran says God put Jesus in Maria's belly. That, that makes God Jesus' father. Oh yeah. He is the son of God. He is. Oh yeah. Jesus, thank you. I ask you to overwhelm him. In Jesus' name. You pray for him. Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. Right now. You're everything. In Jesus' name. If you're here and you need healing in your body, if you're out there and you need a miracle in your body, lift up your hand. I have to get off the microphone right now. But Jesus is going to do miracles. In Jesus' name, don't come to me. I want people to pray for you. I need you guys right now. Go to people right now. She's coming to me. I need you to come to her. I want everybody right now, everybody in this circle, everybody that's with us, I want you right now to go and find somebody to pray for. Everybody, everybody, everybody at the conference right now. I want you to disband right now. And I want you to go find people to pray for right now. Everybody, right now. I want you to go and find somebody to pray for right now. Right now. Everybody, walk around right now. There are people everywhere. Go and ask somebody, how can I pray for you? 
How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody, find somebody to pray for right now. Right now. Everybody, find somebody to pray for right now. Come on. Everybody, go in every direction. Find somebody to pray for. People are walking. Just say, how can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? Jesus' name.